Hey guys, welcome back to Jibber Jab Reviews. Well, today is the day. It's the Galaxy Watch 3 review day, and I know many of you have been waiting on this one because I'm getting questions every day about whether viewers should splurge for another several hundred dollars to get this latest smartwatch, or if they should just sit back and wait for the next version, which I guess would be the Galaxy Watch 4, even though we skipped the Galaxy Watch 2. And guys, I have to be honest with you, I was really struggling with how I would do this review. I must have gone back and forth about a dozen times, but in the end, I decided to do something a little different. I did not want to do just another standalone review because this damn thing is so similar to the Galaxy Watch. So I wanted to do a bit of a comparison there. And also because it's the first new model that we've had now in a couple years with a rotating bezel, I also decided to throw in the S3 for fun, albeit more from a design perspective. So I'm calling this review the Battle of the Bezels. Now the main focus of the review will of course be on the Galaxy Watch 3 because it is the newest member of the Samsung smartwatch family, but I'll also be throwing in some shots of the S3 and the Galaxy Watch because I know many of you already have these devices and you're probably curious to see how they compare to the Galaxy Watch 3. Now I didn't include the Gear Sport in this comparison, and yes, I know it does technically have a rotating bezel, but in terms of size and design, it just really wasn't comparable to the S3 or the Galaxy Watch. Now I ended up ordering the 45 millimeter stainless steel version in black and I decided to go with the all black version instead of the multi-tone silver and black combo because my Galaxy Watch already is in that two-tone version and I really wanted something different this time and to be honest I think the all black version looks pretty awesome. Now I'm not going to go through all the specs of the watch in detail because I have made a few videos on these before, but I will quickly throw up a data sheet on it. So if you want to read through it, then make sure you hit the pause button for the video. But for the purpose of this review, I'm just going to highlight parts that I think are important to help you make a purchasing decision. And of course, to use for comparison to its younger brothers, the S3 and the Galaxy Watch. All right, so let's talk a bit more about the design here. And without a doubt, it is an attractive looking case. It's not as chunky as the S3, and it is definitely more sleek and streamlined compared to the Galaxy Watch. For example, just looking at where you connect your watch band, you can see the Galaxy Watch as well as the S3 are basically identical, but the Galaxy 3 has more angled and much slimmer posts, and that helps give it this sleeker and more modern appearance. And by the way, the Galaxy 3 uses the same pin size as both the S3 as well as the Galaxy Watch, which means those 22 millimeter bands are gonna be interchangeable for all three models. Okay, the next design piece that I wanna mention are the back and the home buttons. And again, the Galaxy Watch as well as my S3 here have the same style buttons. However, keep in mind that the S3 Classic model did come with protruding buttons that are similar to the Galaxy 3. Although the version I have here for this video does have those flat style buttons. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of the Galaxy 3 buttons and only because anytime you have something sticking out from the case that just increases the risk of either something getting caught on them or having them get scratched. Plus, like I said, it has such a nice sleek design to it already that I think having these chunky buttons kind of takes away from that design, although some of you may say that you like the contrasting look as well. Anyways, in terms of functionality, they perform the same as the flat buttons, and they give a bit of a click sound as well when you press on them. I also want to mention one cool detail about those buttons and that's an inscription on the back button which is the one in the top position. It doesn't really show well in the video here and even to the naked eye it's not easy to see but Samsung has included the words Galaxy Watch along the edge of the button. Anyways I thought it was a very simple but nice detail to have included and it's almost like an easter egg because it's not obvious and I only stumbled across it because I've gone over every inch of the device. All right, the last design piece I wanted to mention is something everyone seems to love, and that's the rotating mechanical bezel. And here's where you can really see the evolution in the designs. The S3 has a very flat and chunky bezel with large index markers, and then you got those wider spaces for the teeth of the bezel. The Galaxy Watch has a slightly angled bezel with smaller index markers and teeth. And then the new Galaxy 3 returns to a flatter style bezel, but with a much thinner and narrower ring. And you can see that the inner minute index markers are also different because there are now more of them. 
And again, even in terms of functionality, the bezel performs the same here. The only difference is that I would say is that there is more of an obvious click feeling when you turn the bezel. Now this may be because it's brand new and perhaps that feeling will reduce over time, but it's a very different feeling from the S3 and it's not as pronounced as the rotating click on the Galaxy Watch either. Okay, now let's talk about the display for a minute. I'm gonna be showing you watch faces from a couple of my favorite designers here, that being Virgin, Persona, and Urarity. And I also chose these designers because they have very different styles in their watch faces. So I thought it would be good to show you guys how they all look on the Galaxy Watch 3 and they all look fantastic. All right, so jumping back to the display, Samsung did a great job here with the design because the case of the Galaxy 3 is actually smaller by one millimeter from the S3 as well as the Galaxy Watch, but the actual display is larger. It's 1.4 inches on the Galaxy 3, while it's 1.3 inches on the S3 and the Galaxy Watch. And true, that's not a huge difference overall, but shaving a millimeter here and there just helps giving this that sleeker appearance. Anyways, the colors and the details all look great. Everything is clean and crisp. And with that thinner bezel, those watch faces are really stretched right to the edges. So the watch appears even bigger than the physical dimensions show. All right, guys, let's talk a bit about the software side now. On the Galaxy 3, you're getting the latest Tizen operating system, which is the 5501. And then you're also getting the One UI interface, which is 2.0. What this means is that you're getting a few extra goodies, including some new watch faces, you get Spotify preloaded, and you also have some cosmetic changes to the look of the widgets, as well as some reorganization and removal of items, such as the calories now fall under the title food, and the caffeine widget has been removed completely. Overall though, the vast majority of your widgets are going to remain the same. Okay guys, some other points I quickly want to mention. The Galaxy 3 does come with an internal speaker and mic, which means you're going to be able to make calls directly from your wrist as well as listen to music from it if you choose to do so. Although it also pairs really easily with Bluetooth headsets, which is really your best option for using audio related features. And for watch faces, well, you are getting a few new designs here as well as that new shuffle option, which enables you to cycle through all or only selected watch faces on an hourly, daily, or even weekly basis. And I just did a separate view on this feature just a few days ago. So make sure you click on the link above if you want more details on using that feature. But have a look at some of these watch faces. They are great. And I fully expect these to be rolled out to the other smartwatches once Samsung does a rollout of the Tizen operating system, which if we look historically at Samsung, it's usually a couple months after a new smartwatch is released. Now in terms of notifications, they're actually in the same format as they were before, meaning that when you turn the bezel to the left, you're gonna see them all displayed right there. You also still have access to your most used functions by pulling down from the top of the display. And remember that you can change the order of any of those icons very easily just by pressing down on the display, selecting the icon that you wanna move, and then pulling it to a new location. So for example, by default, my screen brightness setting was on the second page, whereas on the Galaxy Watch, it was loaded on the main screen. So I actually had to move that over. Also added on the Galaxy 3 by default is your power down button, which actually wasn't even an option you could add on the Galaxy Watch. So there's been a few changes, but again, for the most part, they are all pretty minor. All right, guys, I don't think we can do a review without at least talking about the battery because everyone wants to know how long this thing is gonna last without having to recharge. And I'm actually gonna do a separate video on this topic, so I'm not gonna go into all the details here, but I can tell you that it is not getting the same life as the Galaxy Watch, which is to be expected given that you have a 472 milliamp battery on the 46 millimeter Galaxy Watch and you get a 340 milliamp size battery for this 45 millimeter Galaxy 3. So yes, it will not last as long, which in my early testing seems to be at least one full day less, meaning I'm getting around three days with typical use. Now keep in mind that the battery life is influenced by many factors, such as the type of watch face that you have on, meaning is it animated or not animated, the functions that you have enabled in the background and that are on all the time, like Bluetooth, 
Wi-Fi connectivity, GPS tracking. Also, screen brightness uh, can also affect your battery life as well as whether you have the screen set to always on. All these factors are going to have an effect on battery usage, but like I said, I will be releasing a real life battery usage test over the next few days, so make sure you stay tuned for that. All right, the last piece that I want to mention is that if you are someone that's been struggling with the storage space on your device, then you're going to be very happy to hear that the Galaxy 3 effectively doubles the amount that you have access to. Instead of the standard 4 gigabytes, which has been present on all previous models, you now get a much needed boost to 8 gigabytes, which makes sense given that there's now a lot more watch faces available than there were several years ago. And by preloading the Spotify app on the device and having the ability to download music to your watch, Watch, Samsung really needed to pick up its game here, especially since the Apple 5 series smartwatch comes with a whopping 32 gigabytes of storage space. So the 8 gigabytes is nothing really to brag about, but at least it's one perk that the Galaxy 3 has and it's long overdue in terms of an upgrade. Okay guys, that's my review of the Galaxy Watch 3 along with some comparisons to the S3 and the Galaxy Watch. So what do you guys think? Is this still the right purchase price for you? I mean, the differences are really quite minimal here considering the chipset is the same, so you're not getting any performance boost there. The look and style is pretty similar and you're getting a couple health related perks in terms of fall detection and ECG readings, but these may not be important for you personally and the verdict is still out as to how accurate those ECG readings will be anyways, as the function hasn't even been tested. So my personal opinion is, if you already have the Galaxy Watch and you can live with a smaller storage space, then save yourself the cash and wait for the Galaxy Watch 4. But if you're someone that really likes new and shiny things and you want to enjoy the latest ties and updates, the increased storage space and other health related functionality, then pick up the Galaxy Watch 3 because it still is a great device. Thanks again for watching the review and stay tuned because I'm going to be releasing more information about the Galaxy Watch 3 in the very near future. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you all in our next video. Until then, take care.